I don't think you'll be able to turn it. So these mounts are really I, I rather have it. I rather have it not tilted, but one side. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, the resolution is a bit off. That's very numb. Okay. Uh, hi. Uh, can all of you hear me? Great. Okay. Hi. Uh, Thank you, King. King Ming. Just uh, he spoke. He spoke about this topic uh, a while ago, and then he graciously invited me down today. So uh, I like to talk about hacking the Pixmob LED band. And uh, I was just wondering, have you guys actually seen uh, you all actually seen this band before? Uh, did you all go to NDP last year? Okay. Uh, this is the LED band from uh, made by Pixmob, which was used in last year's NDP, and. Uh, this is really cool because uh, everyone in the audience becomes like a human pixel. And then at certain parts of the show, you'll light up uh, in a certain color. And uh, this is a used band. I changed the batteries out. So if you've been to the show, you'll realize that it's in this motion mode. And uh, during the show, it will actually light up like this. It will turn blue and or whatever the color is. Lah. So uh, my motivation for doing this uh, running custom code on this uh, Pixbob thing is because of this uh, micro bit, which is this uh, tool. I would say it's a board, it's a tool for teaching and introducing programming to kids. Uh, and it, uh, I noticed that primary five students, they go down to this event, and I was wondering if this could be uh, like this uh, learning tool for all of them. So this was my inspiration. Uh. But uh, yeah, there were some issues around the way which we will talk about later. So we look at the hardware first. Uh, on the back of the board, you have this battery, 3 volt battery, and a vibration switch. When you shake it, uh, it closes, and you have a connection, and then this lights up or something. And then there's an uh, infrared sensor at 38 kilohertz, uh, RGB LED, uh, I squared CE prom, and uh, the heart of the board, the uh, ABOF MC81F4204. So uh, this board, the uh, MC81F4204, it's a mouthful. I'm just going to call it a chip. Uh, it's uh, quite an exotic part. It's made uh, by ABOF, a Korean company. And uh, it's got 4K flash, 192 bytes of RAM, and uh, uses this very exotic architecture, which is the 810 core. So uh, there are very few peripherals on this board. There's no serial, as we like to call it. And uh, you can only use their proprietary compiler, and they sell a bunch of very hard-to-find ISPs to program it. So the big question, can it be reprogrammed? And the answer is yes. Um, so I actually have a bunch of things here, like uh, this is an I programmed this to be an infrared detector. So when there's infrared, it actually lights up like this. Because I think we are all used to taking our phones and checking for infrared. But now the filters are pretty good, so it's a bit hard to do that. So this is quite convenient. Uh, there is also um, this, it says shake to blink. So yeah, you shake it and it blinks. Uh, I guess it's useful in a rave party or something, but I don't really have a use for it. Uh, it's just cool. And uh, yeah, these are some ideas of what you can do when you can reprogram these boards. So uh, I'll talk about what didn't work. Lah. I think it's quite an interesting journey as well. So the uh, first thing you have to do is to find a programmer, because uh, if you don't have a means to flash the chip, then uh, it kind of defeats the purpose of going anywhere. So uh, the data sheet is 155 pages, but it doesn't say anything about programming the chip. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then uh, I was hoping that someone might have done the, the hard work already, like you know, an open source programmer or something. And there's this guy almost there, but not quite, uh, Leo uh, Kilo Kilo 6 Bravo what, um, something. I'm not in the radio, sorry. Uh, he made this uh, programmer, which is very similar, but not quite what we were looking for. Like, it just didn't work. Like. So unfortunately, this was a no-go. Then I tried to reverse engineer the ABOF tools because they have an ISP software. And then uh, there's a chance that they might be using like, you know, FTDI chip, and then they did bang it from the whole side. But no, nah, it didn't happen. Like. So unfortunately, it didn't work. But the chip ID is there, so it just confirms that the previous slide does, doesn't work. Yeah, I went to try to buy a programmer uh, online as well, AliExpress, emails, and things like that. I sent a few cold emails, uh, uh, but none of them replied. I even sent it in Chinese, but um, yeah. In hindsight, uh, I should have done it in English because maybe it looked more credible as an international customer. Uh, but maybe my Chinese was bad, like, I really don't know. <laughs> yeah. So the funny thing is, when you go to ABOV's website, uh, if you switch it to Chinese, they have an official Taobao store. And if you go there, this is the, this is the only programmer that works for the MCA1 F4204. And it's $203, so it's quite expensive. Uh, put it in perspective, uh, I could buy a flight to Seoul. Uh, one way, yes, it's Air Asia, but it gets me there. <laughs> okay. So what worked? Uh, I bought a flight to Seoul. And, <laughs> yeah, and I visited the ABOV office, and nice. uh, I didn't know what to expect, so I explained to them what's up, like, what, I want, what I wanted to do, and I wanted to buy a working ISP from them. So they were super friendly. I thought it was going to be like Broadcom or something, like, but they were really friendly. So uh, they told me, number one, that uh, you can't buy a compatible ISP anymore because um, the chip is at the end of life, and they don't stock the ISP anymore. So uh, 
um, they gave me a lot of advice and uh, told me about a chip shortcoming. So the biggest issue so far that I understand is that when you try to flash it a few times, the flash dies. It just dies. It doesn't work anymore. So yeah, they told me about that. And I was surprised at how forthcoming they were with their issues. It's uh, ooh, cool. Okay. Uh, they were very, they were very helpful, and uh, I would recommend them. I mean, like I, I'm an individual just going there, I'm not a corporation, and they were just really helpful. And the best part is they actually gave me the programming data sheet. Uh, that's exactly what I was looking for. So uh, it tells me about the timings, the functions, the signal diagrams, and yeah, I guess the takeaway is if you ask them nicely, they might give it to you. Uh. So amazing. Okay, uh, so building the ISP. Uh, when I go back to Singapore, I started work on this. Uh, when we want to flash the ISP, uh, when we want to flash this board, there are a few test points. So zero data, zero clock, nine volt, uh, and the power. Uh, it's something like SPI. Uh, it uses a bidirectional data line, but it's a bit like SPI. Then uh, you have to apply 9 volt on the reset pin to program it, and that's the only part that requires special hardware to generate and switch this 9 volt signal. So uh, with that in mind, I developed this open source board. I call it ABOF ISP. It's not a very creative name. Uh, it stacks on top of this Arduino Pro Micro, and uh, it's built with cost in mind. I can build this whole thing with uh, for about 15 USD shipped. So. Uh, what it really does is it generates 9 volts and allows you to switch the 9 volts and it's quite flexible because in hindsight I realize you can swap that out with a 9 volt battery and if you really want to you can use like your hands to control the signal uh, if you really wanted to. Yeah. So uh, ISP firmware is quite straightforward, it does everything for you, you don't, really, you don't have to worry about it. Uh. And the protocol is also very straightforward. Uh, you have what we, uh, I think if you are using AVR, we used to this thing called fuse bits. You have this thing called configuration byte, which is in square brackets. You send it in square brackets and uh, send the firmware down in curly braces and when you're done it uploads it for you. So building a firmware, uh, this is the only compiler you have for it, and it's free but proprietary. It sounds a bit funny. I can't phrase it better. And it reminds me a bit of Visual Basic 6. Uh. <laughs> yeah. And I think us as, oh, it's a bit dark. Okay. Uh, us as uh, hardware developers, the first thing we usually do is to try the Blink firmware. And so this is the Blink firmware for the, this fixed mob thing. Uh, it blinks a red LED, and uh, I try to relate to Arduino. You have to implement your own delay function because there's no delay, so I just waste a lot of cycles there. Uh, <laughs> Then, uh, yeah, otherwise it's about the same. You just have to manipulate the ports directly, like uh, AVR. So uh, if, you comp if you compile that, you get a bunch of files. And the one I'm really interested in is the hex file, which is uh, the firmware and the uh, SREC format, the Motorola SREC format. So if you take this and then you put it down a programmer, uh, you put it down a programmer, you will get the blinking LED. Uh. So uh, before we do that, uh, I thought I'd just go st a step further uh, because uh, I want to make the development process a bit more familiar. So I ported it to the Arduino IDE. Ooh. and. Yeah, it's, it's a common ground for, I think, uh, quite a lot of us here. But I would say uh, it's, it's not stable. Please don't use it for anything serious. Uh, I wrote here, it's not stable, it's not reliable, it's not web scale, so don't do that. Uh, oh, I'm running, out of, I'm running out of time, so I'll just go, go, go through this and go straight to the programming part. So uh, this is the ISP itself. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see it here. Uh, oh, all right, OK. Uh, OK, I'm going to open the camera and bring it here. Ooh. Doesn't really show up, huh? Catching. Oops. Okay, so this is the programmer itself. Uh, it's a bit dark, so you can't really lock, lock well. And uh, I have a carrier board somewhere, okay. I think, I think the camera is a bit dim, so I'm just gonna hold it up like that. Uh, this is the PixMob itself. I've soldered a bunch of uh, 30 gauge wire to it so that I can program it. Uh. Yeah, so uh, it's here, and this is the ISP. So, uh, just to make sure I'm not cheating you guys, uh, it's the real deal. Uh, I can. You can pass it around. Later. Yeah, I think I'll pass it around later. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's, it's flu now. It's the real deal. Uh. So, just gonna put it together uh, like this. So I have my ball like this now, and the yeah, Arduino ID. Uh, it's on my. Okay. Uh, looks like this. I think most of us are used to this. Okay, so uh, this is the ABOF. I ported it here, and the processor, the clock, and the flash lock, and the voltage reset up. They're all here. So what I do is I connect it to my ISP, and I hopefully it does, hopefully it works because this is a fresh board. I didn't upload it because once I override the original firmware, I won't have it anymore. So I'm just going to upload it and hope that it works. Hmm. Ah, okay. So it's programming now. And it's done. So it's blinking in uh, three colors now. It's uh, just to make sure that you know I'm not turning on the LED with this microcontroller. I'm gonna pluck it out and then I'm gonna put in this battery again. Yeah, and it still works. So yeah, it works. I'm surprised that it works. Uh, yeah. So um, 
Unfortunately, I'm a bit short on time, so I'm just rushing through a bit of this here. Uh, but what we have is custom core execution on this LD band, and uh, I couldn't build a micro bit, or rather it didn't make sense to, because if you go buy a microcontroller a program and a microcontroller, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. I just stick to the Arduino itself. And the files are all open source. It's at my GitHub. Uh, and hopefully in the future, I might be able to talk about dumping the firmware. It looks promising. I haven't got a chance to do it, but it looks promising. So, uh, yeah. Uh, it's been quite a bit of talking here. It's my first time here, but I want to say thank, thank you all of you. It's, it's been nice talking to you. You're a really nice audience. And if you have any questions, oh, I don't have any time, okay. Uh, you can, I guess you can shoot me a tweet or something at JG underscore Lim. I'll try to answer you as, as much as I can. Yeah, but thank you all so much. Stay there, the end will have a lot of time. Okay, great. <laughs> You'll be staying to, uh, Ah, okay. Right. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so